everybody, Pastor Ben here, and I'm going to do a little drawing for you today as we start today's topic. So let's get rid of that lid there, and this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, it's somebody that maybe you've heard of before. Let's see, I'm going to draw some big eyes here. Oh, there we go. Very nice. And, oh, this person has a carrot nose. Maybe you know who this person is already. Um, let's draw a mouth here to something like that here. Something like that. Okay. And this person, oh, we need eyeballs. Hold on here. Okay. And there we go too. And something um, else this person had in the story, they wore a magic hat. Have you guessed who it is yet? Let's see. I'll put a hat on up here. And they wore a magic hat. And something pretty cool happened when um, they put the hat on this person's head. Um, all of a sudden, it came to life. Happy birthday! What? Wait a minute. Did you guys see that? Happy birthday! Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> That's right. This is, um, right here, this is Frosty the Snowman. That's right. That's right. And, uh, wow, and when you put the hat on, he came to life. I'm alive! What a nice thing to happen to a swell guy like me. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Frosty, I'm so glad you're here to join us for Kids Church today. We're going to talk all about you in today's service. Really? Well, you and, and um, we're going to learn some lessons from your story, and we're going to act ultimately learn more about, from God's Word, about Jesus. Really? Oh, what a swell guy. That's right. And uh, so today, we're going to move on with today's lesson, so everybody say goodbye, Frosty. Goodbye. Wait, what? That's right. At the end of the story, Frosty ended up having to go to the North Pole so he wouldn't melt. And uh, here, let's put this cap back on. But uh, Frosty, um, if he would have stayed where he was, he was going to melt. And what? Going to melt? That's right, he's going to melt. And uh, of course, snowmen that are drawn don't melt. Um, but we've got to get rid of get rid of you here so we can move on to the, today's lesson and move on to some other things. Okay, well, see ya. See you later. Next time it's Christmas snow, I'll be there. Okay. Well, bye, Frosty. Well, we're just going to get you all erased here. Hold on. All right. And the hat. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Frosty the Snowman, today in Kids Church. Have you seen the Frosty the Snowman movie? Uh, maybe you've seen the original classic um, and it's one that, uh, one of my favorites to watch during a Christmas season. And in the story, Frosty has a miraculous start. The kids get out to uh, school and they end up building up this snowman. And then when the hat is placed on Frosty's head, Frosty comes to life. It's a miracle, some may say, that Frosty comes to life right there in that story. You know, there's a true story, the real Christmas story of Jesus. And Jesus, when he came to this earth, that was a miraculous start for him too. In fact, he was born to a young lady, Mary, who had a miraculous pregnancy. She wasn't, she wasn't married and all of a sudden she had no husband and miraculously God gives her a baby, Jesus. Wow, what a miraculous, amazing start. In fact, few people believed that <laughs> at the beginning as well. That How could this even happen? Even Joseph had to be visited in a dream and said, No, no, this is God's son. What a great start to the Christmas story, to the story of Jesus, that a baby comes miraculously from God, fully man and fully God, to be the Savior of the world. Now, as the story continues, um, the story of Frosty, and one of the kids that built Frosty and become friends with Frosty right away is a little girl named Karen. In fact, Frosty and Karen end up developing a great relationship as friends. 
and they march through the town. They get on a train heading up to the North Pole, and what ends up happening is Karen gets really cold. And when she gets really cold, Frosty knows, okay, we gotta do something. And they find a greenhouse. Frosty ends up giving his very life for Karen. He goes in so that she can warm up and they end up getting trapped in there and he melts. And he gives his very life so that he can make sure that Karen is safe. Of course, that's not the end of the story of Frosty. Frosty then comes back to life. This is where the story of Frosty really reminds me of the story of Jesus. Now, when Jesus was here on this earth, he came for a purpose. Jesus came as a little baby, ultimately so that he could one day die and pay the price for our sins. We'll use this to represent the life of Jesus here. And Jesus' body was destroyed... That he was beat, he was whipped, he was nailed to a tree, and he died for you and for me. Kind of like how Frosty melted because he had Karen's best interests in mind. Jesus went to the cross because he had your best interest in mind and my best interest in mind. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. In fact, just like in the story of Frosty, he melts and Karen sits there at the puddle <laughs> crying. On the cross, Jesus dies on the cross. There's women there at the base of the cross crying because they didn't want him to die. And they thought, that's the end. They thought, it's over. It's too late. It's all done. The story has ended. But in the case of Frosty, and when we look at the life of Jesus, death was not the end. In fact, something miraculous happened. Just like there was a miraculous beginning to the story, there was a miracle right at this point as well. Not to signal to the end, but to signal almost in a way a new beginning. And Jesus paid the price on the cross and that wasn't the end of the story. What happened? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Jesus came back to life. And now we can have relationship with him. He still wants to be our friend. He still wants to be in relationship with you and with me. He's not dead. He's alive. When Karen is sitting at the puddle and Frosty had melted, she goes, but he's my friend. You know what? Jesus, too, is a friend to us. He's a friend of sinners. You know what? And it gets even better. Because Frosty's a made-up story. It's imaginary. But the story of Jesus is a real story. Jesus is a real person, and he still cares for us. In fact, we see in Scripture that he's coming back one day to take us to be with him in the place that he's prepared for us. In John 14, 3, it says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you may also be where I am. Jesus is coming back. Sometimes we call that the rapture. <laughs> Jesus came the first time. The Bible 
prophesied about. The Bible told us that Jesus was going to come. In fact, over 300 prophecies were fulfilled the first time Jesus was born as a little baby. Emmanuel, God with us, coming to this earth. The Bible also tells us that he's coming back. Do we know when he's coming back? We don't know exactly when he's coming back. In fact, did the shepherds know that Jesus was coming when he did? They didn't. The angels came and told them once he arrived. Did the wise men know that Jesus was coming? I mean, they probably knew he was coming. They were watching the stars, but they didn't know when. And they had to wait for the star to show them the sign that Jesus had arrived. You know, in the same way, we know that Jesus is coming back. And we can wait for him and we can watch for him. But we don't know exactly when he's coming. So, keep alert. Keep watch. Live the way that God wants you to live and wait for Jesus to return. It's going to be an exciting day. Thanks so much for joining us online for Kids Church today. May God bless you. And I'll tell you what, let's pray together as we um, close our time on this uh, little screen you're watching right now. Ready? Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We believe that he is the son of God. Thank you that he died and rose again and that we can put our faith in him. Lord, we believe in you and that you're coming back. Amen. Well, God bless you and we'll see you next week.